uh, going over a little bit in time, but other things that you do with RNA-seq, I've mentioned R several times. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a fairly general purpose statistics program that's used by a lot of people. Um, a lot of R packages come with these things called vignettes, which are basically pretty well documented tutorials. Uh, they give you basically a step-by-step -step way of doing each thing. Um, there's this package called Bioconductor. Bioconductor is a large assembly of various bioinformatics tools. Uh, once you have Bioconductor installed, it's pretty install easy to install any of the sub-packages that have been incorporated into Bioconductor. Um, two of these packages, uh, one is called Edge R, the other call is called DeSeq. These are much more sophisticated ways of trying to do differential expression analysis uh, on uh, things that are beyond just FPKMs. Uh, they ba both basically use these negative binomial distributions as the underlying sort of guess as to how your reads would normally just sort of uh, be uh, distributed. Um, EdgeR was sort of earlier. Uh, DEseq uh, tries to improve upon it because it allows uh, the variance of the different parts of the genome to sort of vary um, to try to get a little bit more accurate about things. Uh, and then just at the end here, uh, we mentioned that SAM tools, uh, uh, while it is mostly about just sort of manipulating SAM files, actually has several functions for doing variant calls. Um, it's this uh, subcommand of it called mpilup. Um, it has this other utility called DCF tools, uh, which actually comes in the SAM tools package and DCF utils. Uh, you basically sort of chain these three, excuse me, these three programs together and you can get out uh, these VCF files, which is the variant call format. Um, you can look at sort of details at this URL right here. Um, but basically, it's another text file, tab delimited. It gives you a lot of basic info that you almost always see in analysis files, chromosome, position. But in this case, it will talk about uh, the reference allele, uh, the alternative alleles, uh, the quality scores it sort of gives to its guesses of the variants. Uh, the filters that you sort of applied to any one of these three programs, and then some more detailed information about how many of your reads sort of varied in that base position from the reference. Um, tool availability. Um, a lot of these things that I've talked about are all Unix-based, uh, but there is this thing called Galaxy, which basically creates a web front end to a ton of Unix bioinformatics tools. Um, there is a, a main Galaxy installed that's open to everyone. Uh, we happen to have one installed here at UNC. You can log into it using your Onion. Um, the only slight difficulty is it's sometimes hard to upload larger data files to it. Uh, we've been trying to get find ways to get around that, but uh, there are certain limitations to it. Um, then there are Curie and Kill Devil, which are the two main uh, compute clusters here. Uh, pretty much all the tools I've talked about exist there in something called the module system. Uh, basically, you use the module system to load in the particular program you need. Uh, then you write a little script to run it. Uh, those are two URLs for sort of basically getting uh, started on either of these things. Uh, the only thing I will sort of caution you is you should never run anything intensive on the command line login. They don't like that, and it screws up everyone else. So anything that is in any way sort of computationally intensive, you absolutely want to submit to the queuing system, uh, which is basically this command called bsub. You bsub any other command, gets sent to the queue, and things in theory should be happy over there. Don't run it on the command line. Um, there is another thing, uh, CLC Workbench. Uh, we have two rotating licenses for this. Uh, it does a lot of the similar things. Uh, except it's basically a desktop program. Um, you can go to our page, just search for UNC Bioinformatics uh, under programs, and we'll have some information on this on this program. Like I said, it only has two licenses. So basically, if two people are logged in, you can't log in. And you sort of have to sit around and wait until someone logs out to log in yourself. Um, we only have two because it's a commercial product and it's kind of expensive. Um, but it's sort of there. For people who don't want to get their hands too dirty in actual sort of command line interfaces, it is a possibility. And I'll just end with my 
computer this workflow diagram, and I will take some questions. None? Does that mean I've lost everyone or I explained everything perfectly? <laughs> 